heart. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you. We exalt your holy name. We thank you because you have made us relevant, even in your work at Upper Room Baptist Church. Thank you, Lord, because the affairs of this world, the challenges of this world, our lifestyle have not disqualified us from bringing your servants. Father, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We have come to discuss briefly on our homes as leaders in Upper Room. Holy Spirit, we hand over to you. Take control. Take over. Minister to our hearts. Impart our homes and glorify your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Um, this session is supposed to be question and answer, but I'll be speaking for maybe 15 to 20 minutes and then we ask questions. So please, you can write down your questions so that we look at it. Those that we cannot address immediately, maybe we'll put them on our WhatsApp, WhatsApp platform. The topic is the minister and his home. And I want us to consider briefly marriage, Lonely, married but lonely or single minister. That's just an aspect of our home. Married but lonely, or we can say married but single. And the test is taken from um, Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Genesis 2, 18 to 25. Please project it for me. Okay, I think I'll read from here then. Okay. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Go on. And God out of the ground, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, filled every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Can we? And Adam gave, gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmate for him. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the lord god had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and adam said this is now the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. One thing that has been said here today is that there's no ministry if you don't have a home. Everything, the, the temperature in your home reflects on the church or on the group that you lead. And if you are lonely at home, you've never been married. Because God says, it is not good for the man to be alone. So if any of you, the man, the husband and wife is actually lonely, you are not in the will of God. And that person has no business being in ministry. Uh, the spiritual state of your home 
determines a lot about your output in the household of God. Long time ago, there was a Baptist church in Ibadan. They used to fight. In a service like this, everybody, elder, leaders, the lead, the, the leaders, the lead fight. They'll fight. The pastors, ministers will fight. And so for every service, some people today will be the one that will separate and fight. The next service, maybe it's the turn of that, those people to fight. So they now sent a pastor who was in the, used to be in the occult to that church. When the man mount the rostrum, he said, ah, they say you are fighting. You will fight the kingdom come if it is all these people. And he started mentioning their names in the occult world. This man, this minister, I know him. My family, that's my own extended family now. They know him. And he started, ah, ah, Oluwo. He started calling their names in the occult. And no two people out of those people in the occult agreed. They were always fighting in their midnight, midnight meetings. And they now came into the church. They were leaders in the church. Of course, they brought what was happening in the spirit into the church. And the entire church was in disarray. No agreement to the extent that it got to the Nigerian Baptist Convention. And that was why they sent this man to come and settle to God. Of course, they beat hell out of him. He ran, couldn't take his cap when he ran out of the church. What are we saying? A lot of things we do, or a lot of things happening in upper room today is a reflection of our homes. When we do what is right, when God is with us in our homes, we are pleasing God, we are not lonely, the kind of union that the Lord envisaged when he started the marriage institution. If you have it in our homes, without you talking about it, without even praying about it, you see it multiplying in the lives of our members. So when you look at your church, check your home as a leader. So what do we mean? by loneliness it is a state of mind where people feel disconnected when there's disconnection between husband and wife or when i either of them or the two of them are isolated from one another there's a this comes with a feeling of emptiness and they feel unwanted i told you once that Something like that happened to me some years ago that my husband and wife, we, we were not seen eye to eye for, for three months. And the day we decided to sit down and discuss, of course, the two of us have been praying while we were also making ways of escape because I said I was going to pack out of the house, not knowing that he too was looking at where to go. And so this thing can happen to anyone. And we discussed that day. The only thing we could pinpoint is when I look at your face, it's as if you hate me. Yes, you, 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 you look at me with hateful eyes. Those were the only things we could pick from that, scenario, that situation in our lives. So what that tells us is that everybody must beware. The devil does not want any home to stand because a home that stands is a terror to the kingdom of the devil. When you see one partner ignoring or maybe lack understanding of your spouse's love language or other unspoken words, there are times that you may not even want to voice out or you do not need to voice out what is happening. But through interaction, through intimacy, you begin to understand the non-verbal languages of one another. If I look at my husband, he knows at least 50% of what is going on in my mind, even when I don't talk. Same thing with me. And when, at times when I ask, uh -huh, what is he say? Nothing, I say, no, there's something. When we have absentee husband, 
or absentee wives. And this is very common now. Before, we say, okay, because we go out to work. But even in our homes, work has taken over our bedroom. Because you see, walking from home, walking from yesterday morning, uh, my, my, my daughter was walking from home. And daddy was trying to tell her something. She was on phone. And she was so embarrassed. Walk call, walk call. That was around 7.30 a.m. And this is the sad reality of our days. We've been talking about um, social media. It's, it's, it's a very advantageous thing, but it comes with its own challenges. So we have to be intentional of making sure that your spouse is not lonely. And then we have parents that are physically present at home, but yet they are absent. They are at home, dad is there, mommy is there, but they are absent. Either because of their carelessness or non chalat attitude, or maybe because they have to do a lot of things, work related on phone, on the social media. Maybe they are even joining one prayer group or another. There was a day I was on prayer meetings, different groups for hours. And I said, no, this is not healthy. It is not all meetings. You must be able to prioritize what you will do, what you will join to be sure that your family does not suffer. When one party is uninvolved in what is happening at home, and that is very, very common with men. We have, it happens to women too but more common with our men, our daddies. Everything is going on in the house. You believe that once you drop money, you can be uninvolved. <laughs> you are alone. In fact, you are married, but you are still single. Maybe your money is not single, but you, you are single. When you lack interest in what your spouse says or does, we see the situation where wife or husband will be speaking. The second one will be reading paper. You don't even understand or you are ignoring what the other party is saying. That is not what God meant when he said you must be. That man should not be alone. Not ready to discuss your day-to-day -day activities. Whatever you do in church, whatever you do at work, you must be ready to pour out your mind as soon as you get home. You must be able to tell your spouse this and this and this happened. Even project what will happen the next day. It doesn't show that the man is weak. It just shows that the man is responsible. Every day, thank God, it happens to me several times. I was in Abuja most of the time in the last 20 years. But all my day-to-day -day activities, we always discuss it in the evening and we talk about the following day. The same thing with my husband's activities. It is something that we have to be intentional about because a man that has gone out, you have walked, you are tired, you want to hit your bed and sleep. But there must be time for you to discuss your day-to-day -day activities. It shows the bonding and that you are not alone in your challenges. Your spouse is not alone in her challenges. If anyone that is alone, when you sleep on the bed with your spouse, even though the two of you are, are on the bed, it's either the woman is weeping or the man is sighing. You know, men, they find it difficult to weep. But by the time you hear your husband saying, hmm, hmm, there's something. That man is alone. Instead of signing, you, instead of weeping, you should be able to freely voice out your concern, your challenges to your spouse. That is why the Lord brought you together. When we read in Hebrews 10, 13, 4, that we must not defile the marriage bed. If marriage bed is filled with tears every day, that bed is the fire. A marriage bed is a place of comfort, a place of rest, a place of sharing. But when instead of you enjoying that moment together, it is weeping or sighing, you are defiling the bed and you are getting lonely 
day by day when there's so much secrecy you see a lot of secrecy going on among couples in the in in the church what the husband is doing the wife does not know the passage we read talks about transparency when you are not transparent when you are not accountable you are lonely you are still behaving as if you are single so we need to examine our life and living with our spouse living together is not an automatic cure for loneliness god brought the woman and he began to state the, the prescription that the two of them were naked they were not ashamed you, you therefore a man who leave his mother and his father will be joined to his wife that's what cleave cleave is a very strong word maybe the bible would have used to be joined joined when something is joined you can easily separate whatever is joined but when you say cleave to your wife and the analogy i always use with the word that cleave is um, a piece of furniture there's something they call veneer those that are conversant with furniture making here we know the near is very very thin and when you put down a piece of wood you now put veneer depending on the on the design on the veneer that you put when you just put it on it you polish it and that's the design that it will come up any attempt to remove that veneer from the wood it will injure you can't even remove the veneer whole again is you to only remove in pieces and the pieces is useless it's not useful to anyone and the wood will be de de defaced so what are we saying the kind of thing god expects is for us to be joined together to the extent that attempt to separate us will render the other one useless now, what are the solutions? What are the solutions to this thing? Let's create family time that will involve the wife, the husband, and the children. Let's have family time and discuss. And our children must be free to discuss. Because when they tell us something, you'll be surprised the way those children are reading you. And what they will say, you find out that you have to explain. And so it's a way of get, making us accountable as husband and wife, where you have to give account of some of the things you do to your, to your children. We last um, two days ago, we had a discussion in our house. We had a, 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 a maid that was heavily possessed. And she was manifesting at her notes. We had noticed that Wednesday before, but we felt that we could help her. So one of my children was not around. He traveled. I now told him when we're discussing, I said, Oh, we have sent this girl away. He said, Why? Is that not why God brought him to a pastor's house? So that she can be delivered. Where else do you want her to go? And so we now explained all we had to explain all the efforts we have made to ensure that this girl, but she was not willing. And because of that, so that she will not be contaminating everybody, we had to. So it's a type of accountability. There was a time, long, long time ago, my there was a fast, fasting period in the church. And one day, because daddy was having stomach problem. He had to take some medications, so he ate. And one of the children now called me, why is daddy eating? He asked everybody to fast in the church. Then they were very young. I'm not even sure they were in the university. He said, he asked everybody to fast and he's eating. What's the problem? I now explained to him and he saw this and said, oh, I see. So let them be free to tell you anything. Then let's speak out to one another. Let there be uninhibited communication, both verbal and non-verbal. And for, for us, the women, at times, we may not be able to voice out everything, every concern that we have, but there must be a way that you communicate 
your challenges, your concerns to your husband without talking about it. And every man must know. It's easy for the man to say they are, you know, they are the head of the family. They will just say it. But it, for, for us as women, we may have to say some things through body language. Every man should study his wife to know when that woman is communicating, saying something to you, or else we just believe that we are married, but in the reckoning of God, we are still single. Let's spend more time together. Let's spend more time. There was a, I think a Bible college class I was taking and they were talking about st stress. And somebody said, when you get home and your wife just wants to know everything and you are stressed already. And I said, I remember I said, um, unwinding from the stress of the day can also be done by talking to your wife, interacting with your wife. So your wife, talking to your wife, discussing with your wife or your husband is not part of dread, stress. And then let's share ministry boarding. We are all in the ministry together. Let's share ministry boarding. Please, can I have the questions? Let's share our boardings together. If the husband is a minister, you wife, you are a minister. You carry the burden together. And until we become, we start recognizing th this as a church, we will not go far. When the husband is the pastor, the wife is a pastor. So whatever burden a pastor carries, you wife, you must be ready to carry the, 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 the burden and cover up for him in some cases. I've had to cover up for my husband at some family and friends ceremonies. If the church program does not allow him, I will go there. And some, in the, especially in his family, they have accepted that when they see me, they have seen him. And so as we relate together, we should make sure that we carry our extended family members along so that they will know our schedule. But it needs all. The first assignment is to your family. The first responsibility is to your family. So if you don't um, pass there, whatever you do in the church is just an activity. You are not making impact. You are not releasing power. Even if we come here, we jump, we sit down, we, 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 we seem to be, um, exuding fire. That fire is fire that cannot burn anything. You know the fire of Bisco. Do we remember Bisco? That thing that we use during Christmas in those days. Eh? No, no. It doesn't burn anything. You are just entertaining. So please, I plead with you. Let us begin to pay attention to our families. Let's pay attention. Do we have any question or eh? none? Okay. So let's be, let's pay attention to the condition of our homes, especially to the young people here. Whatever you do now is a seed to your future. Whatever you do, the way you run your home, the way you to run your life. Your children are watching you. They may not even know that they are watching you. Today, when I look at some of my children, there were things about me that I see manifest. I say, ah, God, if I had been an armed robber, maybe this is how these children would have picked it without knowing. If I've been abusing my husband, or maybe my husband won't, Maybe once in a while, he has used backhand to, to, to hit me. Though I told him that he has never done that. Maybe because he's afraid that I may end up beating him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So please, our homes, our marriages are signposts. You know what we mean by signposts? You are going somewhere and there are signposts on the way. Oh, this is where you are going. Like if you are going for 
burial ceremony of our older parents. Maybe you go to Ichebu. By the time you get to the main road, you see the banner, Abby? Oh, it's here. You. This way leads to, I agree with you. Then by the time you get to the junction, you see another banner. Oh, we are supposed to turn here. And another one, maybe a big one in front of the house. That is what our marriages are doing to our children. It's a signpost. And do you want them to have a good marriage or you want them to have a toxic marriage? And it's better we start from when you are young. You are still young, most of, most of you here, you have little, little children. What are you teaching them? Do you teach them to honor their wives, to respect their husbands and future? You will see, even if you don't say, do it. They want something they have seen over and over and over again. Before you know it, they have changed it. Upper room is going places. But we cannot go if our homes are in disarray. And the question you should ask yourself and your spouse, are we going to be the one that we hold down this church? If everyone is light, we are doing God's will, we are moving and you are with us. The weight you are carrying, weight of sin, load of sin, it should just be bringing down that aeroplane. Ask yourself. Am I going to be? You are spending money for the church. Maybe the church know or they don't know. If they do and they appreciate you. But that one does not count with God. If the only thing your giving can do is to give you financial blessing. Is to make sure maybe some things that you are supposed to spend money for are cared for by God. But when you face God, what are you going to say? And marriage is very important to God. In Ephesians, it says that God likens our marriage to the relationship between Jesus and the church. To show how Jesus loved the church, he gave himself for the church, and to show the responsibility of the church to Jesus. Now, what are you communicating to the world? your immediate neighbors, your family members about Jesus Christ, about the love of Jesus. Is it that when you tell somebody, oh, Jesus is the husband of the church, he gave his life. And I don't believe I ask, how can it happen? Can they reference your family as an example of how to plainly present that gospel? We cannot be perfect. If we are looking for a perfect spouse, we don't know what we are doing because we came from different backgrounds. So we cannot be perfect. There are still certain things that we can tolerate. Let's tolerate ourselves. And maybe there are some things, you know, some people are impossible. I agree. The only thing you will do is to pray. If you see me like this, I, I, I will share two experiences with you that God has helped me. One looked so, um, so small, but God taught me some lessons. Years back, somebody wanted to sell me, sell to me or help me get a um, washing machine at a very cheap price. And I came home, we didn't have money. We were really struggling then. But this problem, the stress of washing clothes was getting too much for me. And I'll say, ah, that somebody wants me, wants to do, do, do this. They said, no, 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 we can't afford it. And I was trying to explain, say, no, ah, that thing pained me. And I kept quiet. And I lost that opportunity. But I did not force my way. But not too long after, he changed his mind. And since then till today, even when the, I feel that, well, we can manage this washing machine that is not good, it's the one that will ensure that we have a replacement. But I could have destroyed my home, even at that time. Then there was a time, 
my husband was a stark unbeliever. You see, unbeliever that does not have part two. You see now. And I was born again, coming to this church. So that the longer came to visit me as a member. But then my husband came from Portacot and he said I should give him beer, serve him beer. And I went to the fridge. As I got to the fridge, they were, they were, that there was a bell. And I peeped. I saw that the longer came, hey, my church leader. He was, he was called church leader there. And I came, I said, my church leader, ah, let him go before you take this your beer. He said, in my house, let him come and sit down and take beer. As he said that, I, I didn't know that we didn't lock the door downstairs. The man just walked in and he heard everything. I was so ashamed. Oh, I went, I gave him his beer. And of course, you know, Baba Longe, he didn't stay long. Maybe he thought that this man may get drunk and start beating me. <laughs> Here, he left. But I obeyed. And we were discussing with the children at the believers class, you know, um, workers class, our graduates class there. And I now told them, because they were talking about their parents sending them to go and buy cigarettes. Should they answer? I now told them this story. And they said, hey, and you answered him. You served him there. I said, I did. Daddy just came in and they were asking, ah, what if you didn't do it? What would have happened? He just answered them. Hey, she would have gone to, their, to her father's house. And if she refuses, I was in protocol. I would go and I won't come back home. And now, if we had done that then, what do you think would have happened to us? now so please it god that says we should submit to our husband if you ask you to go and do something sinful yes that you know that this is sinful asking you to expose your body in the case of um vashti and you say no or you ask you to come and take ego or to come and take this thing you can insist but there are certain times, certain duties of a wife to your husband, even if you do not agree, report him to God. And see if God will not come to the truth to you. For every woman, because that has been my testimony, a, a woman that obeys her husband fully, see how God will handle him more than you can even handle. And you can even pray to God, say, if the man is so stubborn, ask God to give you his mumu button. They all have mumu button. Once you press the mumu button like this, they will just be following you like this. Come, come, come. But if you, but if you do not know that, you will just be struggling. A typical man is egoistic. So, and for us men, because I'm rounding up now, my time is up. If you want to enjoy your, your wife, show love in giving. Some of us, we can't even give to your wife. You are going home, you can't give. The money that your wife is not enjoying with you, you are telling him how that is that money that is keeping you because you are working. Am I enjoying your, the money you are working for? But let her be part of your income. Let her spend with you. And of course, if you want your husband, your, you, if you want to spend your husband's income, whatever you make too, you must bring it to the table. That is where we are today. God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. Let us rise up and just commit our homes to the hand of God. If you are with your husband or wife, just hold their hands and just commit, rededicate your marriage to the hand of God. You don't want your marriage to disqualify you from the work of God. You don't want your home to make you irrelevant in what God is said to do through you. If upper room is going places 
we are the people that will carry it there. If upper room is being enlarged, we are the people that will serve there. Others will only come and join us and will be the one to even mentor others. Some of us, we have lost respect in our families, in our parishes, because of the way we talk. We used to have a pastor in Philippi. There was a pastor's meeting and the husband was presiding. And she came, maybe they had quarrel. And as soon as she got to the meeting, said, and the husband said, ah, ah, my pain here. That is, my head is not correct. Is that what you are, going, you are saying? And, he said, and the woman said, well, you said it yourself. If, you're, if that is the way you have said, maybe that is your situation. And everybody at the meeting started looking at themselves. And the husband, now was telling my father later, I said, oh, daddy, that's the way she behaves. But me, I won't talk oh, when I get home and she's sleeping. I will lock the door and beat her, beat her, beat her, beat her. And I will carry my, my key and go out. For three days, I won't come home. She will be looking for him. So by the time I return home, she won't even talk to the back. Is that the kind of family we want? God forbid. Not in this church. But it takes intention to be intentional about it let's be deliberate good home good family does not come just like that by chance it comes by hard work by tolerance by prayer on your knees we can get a lot of things done remember our children are looking at us not only our children your church members there's a way they can feel the temperature there's a way they can feel if things are not right. Why don't you ask for the help of God today? Lord, we need help. We need help. We want upper room to grow. We want upper room to grow. And I want to live right. I want my home to be right. So that at the end of the day, I will not be the clock in the wheel of progress in upper room. Some of us women, because our husband is the pastor, the head of the church, we talk chaka 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 to members. See, church is a voluntary organization. We here, we are, we are not, we are, we, we, it is by, it is compulsory for us. But for those that come in day in, day out, is a voluntary organization. If you talk to them anyhow today, they'll go tomorrow. Other churches are looking for them. So we should not say because we are pastor's wife, and mark it, any pastor's wife that will talk anyhow to the members, I tell you, that's the way she talks to her husband at home. My sisters, please, let's be very careful. The oil of God is upon the head of our husband, and the little that spills over from their head comes on our head. Please, let us be ready to obey God, and see if God will not fight for us. If God will not handle them, and I'm sure every husband here does not want to incur the wrath of God in the way they handle the woman God has given to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We exalt your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. You are gracious. You are mighty. Thank you, Father, for creating us male and female. Thank you for making clear your purpose for creating us because you want godly seed. Both our biological children and spiritual children. Both our workers, the workers under us. You want godly seed. Father, Lord, help us to be willing to follow you all the way. To obey you. We will not be wise in our own eyes. And your name alone will be glorified in our lives every day. In Jesus' name.